Ladies and gentlemen, uh, my guest tonight, I'm very excited to bring him up to you. Uh, he is an alum of UNCW, where currently uh, the track team is in need of all of our help. So if you can please welcome to the stage right now, Brian Blake, everybody. <laughs> We had fought it back, and then in December, in the middle of the finals, they told the kids in kind of a secret meeting, "Guess what? There's no more team after this year." So in the middle of the finals, they're told, "You know what? You got to find somewhere else to go." So that was very. That was. A, that they're already distracted. They've already have other things to do with. They always. Have, they already have to deal with finals. And on top of this, the news is just, the, the school is just dropping this news on this. Right. They said at the end of this year, everything else is done. We need to find some place else. You guys have. So at this point, and and. Uh, you see, have you have any uh, scholarship athletes, any scholarship track students out there? Or? Oh, absolutely. It's Division One schools, Division One sport. We've been champions 11 times since 1997. We actually won the first conference championship in, in school history. Uh, had the first, the first female All-American in school history. Uh, so there's a lot of firsts at the UNCW backside. It's a proud program. Absolutely. absolutely. Yeah. So. Um, so they say this, the program's over, and did they, did the, were the school giving us, uh, giving the students any room on this, anything they could, uh, any, uh, was there a, was there a uh, prerogative, like, well, there's no program unless we can do this, or? Well, at first, no, and then a number of, uh, of us old folks, the young people who are still there, parents, and everybody who's plugged into it, um, made a big enough stink, and they finally said, you know what, we'll give you an opportunity to raise uh, $250,000 by the end of May okay. for the team to continue next year. Two, all right, so that's a, that's a crowdfunding case, it's $250,000. Yes. All right, uh, so how, where do you know right now where we're, where we're at that goal? We're sitting at about $120,000 last time I saw it, right. right around that ballpark. That's, that's impressive, so that's, uh, that's, that's, all, that's all from the community. Absolutely, and, and it's, it's even more impressive given the fact that we were given Basically, three or four months to raise all of next year's budget. That's. <laughs> I, 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 I'm not. I don't. I don't know if you, if you took it. That just seems to me like that's not what your job should be at all. It doesn't feel like. You know, I, I agree. And they even said, you know, if you guys can raise eight hundred thousand dollars in a year to build a new track, you guys will be pretty safe from here on out. But at the same time, you wouldn't ask the tennis team to raise funds for a new. Bat, uh, for a new tennis court. Right. And you definitely wouldn't ask the basketball team to go and personally solicit funds for a new Trask Coliseum. Right. So the university would take care of that. Right. This, this is, uh, I've never heard of anything like this before. This is completely unprecedented. So how much time is there left on this? On this uh, we had just a little bit over a month to raise the rest of that money. And you know, here and there we run into folks who, um, one of the uh, students who graduated a couple years ago uh, ran to a lady at a meet in Virginia who donated just off the uh, off the fly kind of conversation donated about ten thousand dollars. That's to amazing. That is amazing. Uh, so what? So I understand that in a, in, a, in about a, a, in a few weeks we have this. Uh, we have a, a, you guys have been doing all kinds of events around to raise money. What type of events uh, do you have coming up? Right. There's a five K coming up in Mayfair on. Uh, let me see real quick. I believe it's April 26th at 8 a.m. Uh, 5K, 5Ks are huge around this area. There's so many triathletes and, and marathoners and those kinds of folks uh, trying to tap into the community. They all use the track. They train people at the track trying to get them to help buy into the whole situation, help us out a little bit. So we're, we're hoping for a huge surround this 5K All right, that sounds good. So what's the, what's the date on that? That is April 26th. April 26th at Mayfair. Uh, this uh, 5K. Um, now, I, I feel like everything you're saying makes sense, but uh, this is entertainment, and every in a, for every opinion, there's a there's a counter opinion, and uh, I I feel like I wouldn't be doing my job as a host if we didn't at least present uh, an an opposing viewpoint to this. Sure. So if it's all right with you, uh, I have invited a guest, an expert on the track and field, to come on the show tonight. 
Uh, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our next guest to the stage. Uh, he is he has a PhD in malarkey from the University of Kentucky. Please welcome to the stage, Dr. Chip Gunderson, everybody. <laughs> I, I see you brought some borders out, Chip. Yeah, I did. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, please. Oh, thank you, thank you, sir. Thank you. Ah, uh, dude, the playoff going is so nice out here. <laughs> <laughs> what did you What did you say your name was, uh, Fong Joon? Brian Blake. Brian Blake. Sounds like my cousin. I, I have to admit, it feels a bit like between two ferns right now. <laughs> <laughs> This is real. Yes. This is real. <laughs> um, gentlemen, uh, something we talked, Brian and I talked about was it doesn't feel like it's the job of the students, the burden of the students, to raise this money to save the track program. Uh, agree, disagree. Be honest with you, Mr. Maxiel, I do not know <laughs> why there is a track and field program to begin with. It is running.
with you. I wouldn't do it myself. But for those people who do run 5Ks, they tend to enjoy running a lot. Uh, final, final point for John. Uh, Brian, uh, you ran track at UNCW. Yes, sir. And if I'm not mistaken, you coach track now? Yes, sir. Um, so my final question to both of you, uh, for, pe for students and people who run track, is there a benefit to that? What is the value that somebody gets out of being a part of a team, being a part of a uh, track program? I don't know any benefits, so you can go. <laughs> oh, oh sorry, this is, this is a this is a debate. I'm sorry. Are there any benefits? I do not think so. Okay. No, <laughs> so I would like to take a cat scan of your hamstrings and see how they have held up over time. <laughs> I, I have torn both of my hamstrings. That would not turn out very well. See. I will say though, as a as a coach and as an athlete, um, the track and field teaches you so much about personal responsibility about bouncing back from uh, from defeat. Um, you rarely are going to be the one who wins all the time. You will most often get beat. You have to come back and fight from that. And if there's not a better metaphor from life, I can't find one else. Um, I was a hurdler. In hurdles, you fall. And you're not a hurdler unless you get back up and continue the race. That's kind of the motto. If you fall and stay down, then you're not you're not going to it. You might as well go home and, uh, and go sleep on the couch. But uh, the rest of us will get up and continue pushing on. <laughs> uh, sorry. You know who else that teaches? Uh, baseball, uh, basketball, football, <laughs> hockey, and the, the quite often played around here, lacrosse. I, I will say this, as a, uh, as a team sport that is mostly individual, though, track and field is different from those sports in that Football team, you can be the 45th man on the roster and never see the field and still go to the championship game. That does not happen in track and field. Either you put up or you shut up. This is a very big society nowadays that everyone gets a participation award. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe that man deserves to get a championship ring. Maybe he does not. I don't know. That is for another debate, another day. Gentlemen, <laughs> well, I thank you very much for your time. Uh, are there? Is there anything uh, you, you'd like to say or any questions you'd like to pose to each other? Anything you did not get a chance to say uh, in this debate? I still want to know where I can go to find out what track and field really is. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'd like to invite you to a high school meet if you want to come to one next weekend. Uh, UNCW, unfortunately, is not able to have a lot of home meets, so you won't be able to see a lot of college teams most of those meets have already taken place. On the other side, I will say this though, UNCW Track and Field has produced seven Chancellor's Cup awards, which is the UNCW Athlete of the Year across all sports. Can they sell those cups to raise money for the track and field? <laughs> <laughs> so the will accept it. Uh, we've had 95% graduation rate. Um, we continually put up uh, more leadership roles in the Student Athlete Advisory Committee, which is an NCAA committee. UNCW uh, track and field consistently puts presidents, vice presidents, um, secretaries, all these major officer roles in place. And, uh, track and field? Track and field, yes, sir. Okay. And we've won um, by ourselves with the exclu uh, excluding swimming, who has come on strong. Oh, don't get me started on swimming. <laughs> <laughs> we've, uh, we've won more championships than just about every other team combined. That's because UNCW does not have a football team. If anything like the basketball team, they might have four championships also to compare to our 11. So. <laughs> <laughs> Brian Blake, thank you very much for joining us. Ladies and gentlemen, our gentlemen.